Hi, Dave Soriano. I'm a chemistry professor with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in northwestern Pennsylvania, USA. This short lecture on liquid fuels of primer is from a course I teach, Introduction to Biofuels. And uh, perhaps you'll find uh, some of the content uh, stimulating, hopefully informative. Liquid fuels of primer. Ethanol and fuel blends, um, when we look at that as an additive, ethanol, currently most countries do blend ethanol and gasoline as a so-called oxygenate, and it's supposed to enhance gas mileage, uh, car mileage. The refineries lower the gasoline vapor pressure to accommodate the increase caused by ethanol addition. Splash blending in tanker trucks is... Uh, at how it occurs while it's being delivered to the filling stations. In other words, they, they add the ethanol, free of water, 200 proof, 100% ethanol, to the gasoline right into the tanker truck so it mixes while it's being delivered. Most major automobile manufacturers warranty cars to run on up to 10% ethanol. Now, European standards currently allow for up to 5% ethanol. About 30% of all American gasoline is E10, 90% conventional gasoline and 10% ethanol. All gasoline in Brazil is E25, you see, because automakers use formulations resistant to ethanol degradation of components. And of course, Brazil is producing bioethanol from sugar cane. Cars with specially designed engines can run on straight ethanol, which is available at 90% of the filling stations in Brazil. Flexible fuel vehicles, FFV, are becoming popular in the United States, Europe, and Brazil. Colder climates, low vapor pressure of ethanol, as the temperature drops, can cause cold start problems, so E85 is available for U.S. cars. Less than 1% of the stations have it, and in Sweden. A few companies have developed additives that allow for blending of 5-15% to pure ethanol and diesel fuel. The additive package has a surfactant lubricant and cetane enhancer. Cetane is a measure, of course, of fuel ignitability under compression in a diesel engine. My area of research here at the school is the development of synthetic diesel formulations from renewable resources, not biodiesel, but uh, other feedstocks. And uh, we, the emphasis is on solubility in petrodiesel and remaining soluble at low temperatures encountered in winters in, let's say, northeastern United States. Lipid-derived biofuels. Let's talk about stuff. Straight Let's vegetable talk about oil can be extracted from nearly lip. any oilseed crop. Stuff. Where you been and where you're going, stuff. And uh, the... Uh, The oil can be extracted from nearly any oilseed crop, rapeseed, sunflower, soybean, palm, etc. Now use cooking oil called yellow grease here in the United States and animal fat from slaughterhouses are also potential feedstocks for use as fuel in diesel engines. After particles filtration and water removal, this oil can run in some non-diesel engines as well. Now diesel engines uh, just an overview, this is from Figure 3.1, Energy in the Environment, 2nd edition, put out by Wiley and Sons. Fossil fuels, uh, direct heat, light, and heat engine, and of course heat engine to mechanical energy, and mechanical energy for electrical energy, or conversion into transportation and in ind industry applications. And of course, with the heat engine, you have your basic thermodynamics. Heat flows from uh, uh, high temperature to low temperature, and your work output is equal to the Q hot minus the Q cold. So heat flow, temperature differential. Now, a four-stroke internal combustion engine, here we see A, B, C, and D. This is with a gasoline-powered, let's say, or ethanol-powered, spark plug non-diesel engine and you have your four points of uh, stroke compression expansion and exhaust of gases so fuel intake upper cylinder 
piston, downstroke, and then upstroke. Now a diesel engine is also internal combustion and it may have a fuel injector, the modern diesel engines. There may be a glow plug starting aid and you see the pre-chamber of mixing and air intake exhaust, higher compression, much higher compression. You have your intake valve and your exhaust valve and here's your combustion chamber and under high compression air becomes, uh, the fuel is uh, uh, combusted by the compression of the air to high temperature. Here's the output shaft and uh, the lower part of the cylinder and this is the uh, piston. Much larger compression in the diesel engine. Now turbine electricity and what we have then is electricity from a generator and this could be wind, hydroelectric, etc. Turbine turns the shaft to the generator. Natural gas input, let's say Natural gas combustion turns the turbine blades. You have hot exhaust gases, uh, water in for cooling, steam exhaust, steam output for cooling, and the hot exhaust gases from the turbine are passed through a boiler which generates steam. Now, going back to uh, oil extraction, oils from plants are extracted from the seeds by first cutting the latter into flakes, followed by solvent immersion. They also can do hydraulic crushing, uh, but those processes are too energy intensive. The non-oil seed component is often sold as high-protein animal feed or uh, used as fertilizer. Now, when you look at the SVO, street vegetable oil versus petrodiesel, straight vegetable oil in general has higher viscosity and this is so especially in colder climates and cannot normally be used in current diesel engines you would have to adapt it and heat it or change uh, the compression you see the engines would have to be refitted and the alternative as I mentioned is heating the oil or it must be used in a dedicated engine such as the Elsbed engine Vehicle manufacturers will not warrant engine for use with straight vegetable oil. Modern diesel engines. They have increased electrical and combustion control mechanisms, which are generally not compatible with operation using straight vegetable oil. Due, uh, sorry about the typo there, due to straight vegetable oil solidification with cold temperatures, it's difficult to blend with petrodiesel. And this is particularly important to keep in mind with animal sources, saturated fatty acids, which are going to be more prone to be solids at ambient temperature than the uh, uh, vegetable oils, which with double bonds present are more prone to be liquids. But even they will solidify at relatively mild winter temperatures in the United States in the Northeast. So different plant oils have different properties that will affect engine performance. Palm oil and coconut oil have short fatty acid chains and can be blended with petrodiesel. Tropical locations can run straight vegetable oil with these fuels. Temperate climates find that straight vegetable oil is limited to niche markets. For example, it might be suitable for use in uh, Southern California here in the United States. Biodiesel. Relative to straight vegetable oil, biodiesel is a more blendable form of lipid-based biofuel. Biodiesel is made by reacting to straight vegetable oil with an alcohol, usually the cheapest one being methanol, methyl alcohol, wood grain alcohol, which is uh, primarily made from natural gas methane. And this process is called uh, transesterification. And the product is an alkyl ester of a fatty acid, which will have thinner viscosity and is com comparable with petrodiesel. It would C10 H22 to C15 H32. As I pointed out, my area of research um, involves the production of a renewable biodiesel, but not uh, conventional vegetable and uh, uh, animal oil feedstocks. The reaction to make biodiesel is carried out with 80 to 90 percent vegetable oil, 10 to 20 percent methanol. The methanol must be free of water or you will get a byproduct forming soap formation and you need a catalyst. The catalyst can be an acid or a base, but transesterifications are significantly a thousand fold faster with a um, thousand times uh, faster with uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide um, 
as uh, using base catalysis. You generally produce about the same volume of biodiesel that you started with with respect to the straight vegetable oil. Methanol is cheaper than ethanol and glycerin byproduct is harder to remove from the latter it turns out. Now the glycerin or glycerol is a primary co-product with biodiesel. The glycerin only offsets about 5% of the production costs but is valuable to the cosmetics, inks, preservative and lubrication industries and also is used in soap formulations. Glycerol is 1,2,3-trihydroxypropane. Range of vegetable oils. Due to the wide range of vegetable oils, there is a greater range in the characteristics of biodiesel feedstocks than for ethanol. Ethanol is one, of, one specific compound, but biodiesel will vary in the chemical identity. Some vegetable oils have saturated and shorter chains of fatty acid content, such as the palm oil or coconut oil. Animal fat generally is solid versus the liquid vegetable oil. And I refer you to the excellent Journey to Forever website. If you go to the internet, you'll find a very, very good resource there in terms of uh, uh, examination of the chemistry of different feedstocks used to make biodiesel. Vegetable oil chemical composition. In class, I would hand handouts on that, and you can find them at Journey to Forever. Thank you very much for listening to this short presentation, and we will be uploading others from my course, Intro to Biofuels, in the next day or two. Bye for now.